Mario Kart 8 is a stunningly successful game. With over 50 million copies sold, it's one of the top selling titles of all time. So perhaps it's not very surprising that Nintendo has come back with a content expansion for their blockbuster kart racer. Dubbed the Booster Course Pass, this expansion includes a whopping 48 courses split over six waves of course releases, with the last content drop scheduled for late 2023. So far, 16 courses have been delivered, with the most recent pack issued earlier this month. But these courses have been mired in controversy. Players and press alike have complained about basic layouts and graphical downgrades with these new tracks. At the heart of the issue is that almost all of these tracks have been ported from Mario Kart Tour, a phone and tablet game with simplified graphics and gameplay. So how do these new booster course tracks stack up? Are they a good fit for Mario Kart 8? Or is the distance from mobile platforms just too large? Mario Kart 8 had semi-stylized artwork, like prior entries in the Mario Kart series. Now, there were plenty of cartoonish elements. The characters, for instance, feature the sort of bold silhouettes and simple textures common in Nintendo's first-party software. Lighting was exaggerated, with plenty of bloom, and particle effects were smooth and minimally detailed. But Nintendo took a slightly different approach with the race tracks themselves. The tracks had plenty of texture detail and featured quite elaborate trackside buildings, backdrops, and interior spaces. Aiming for high frame rates on the limited Wii U hardware meant technical concessions, of course, like a heavy reliance on normal mapping to enhance modest polygon counts. But the Mario Kart 8 tracks packed a lot of detail and visual splendor for the player to enjoy, which is frankly what makes these new booster course tracks so disappointing. Obviously, we knew that these tracks were being ported from a mobile game, but there really isn't common ground technically between the old tracks and the new. To start with, the textures look completely different. Booster course tracks have flat, low detail textures in general, particularly on trackside geometry and foliage. The new tracks have a clay-like appearance as a result, with minimal surface detail in most areas. If you do get close to certain materials, however, you will notice that some grime and roughness has been blended in with overlaid detailed textures. These are textures that contain repeated patterns of high frequency detail. Depending on the lighting conditions, this can look okay, though it doesn't match the look of the original tracks at all. Most of the time, however, objects look almost flat shaded, which is particularly jarring on grass and other foliage elements. Some of the game's textures also appear to exhibit some compression artifacts. There are plenty of specific textures and models that get a very different treatment in the booster courses as well. This directional sign in the base game looks like a detailed canvas stretched over a barrier, whereas its equivalent in the booster courses is just bare geometry with minimal texturing. In the base game, these blocks feature a nice bit of specular lighting and normal mapped details, while the booster course versions look plain and flat. The wood scaffolding in these caves looks quite ugly and smeary in the booster course version, and the railroad that runs alongside them is much more detailed than the original tracks. This shot is a great illustration of the texturing differences in general. The old texture work simply looks much better here, I feel. The road textures are the only real exception to this trend. Dirt and tarmac road surfaces have textures that look much closer to the base game, and often feature good looking normal maps. Model geometry in general is handled very differently between the two groups of tracks. While Mario Kart 8 had to keep its polygonal budget in check to keep performance high, Nintendo managed to craft some intricate looking trackside flourishes. Interior spaces in particular were a real treat, with enough geometric detail and texturing tricks to convincingly realize Nintendo's artistic visions. Direct comparisons here prove a little bit more tricky, but in general the booster courses look much simpler. Trackside buildings, for instance, look flat, boxy, and visibly low poly. There's plenty of egregious looking boxes, tubes, and other small trackside details that lack the nicely rounded appearance of geometry from the base game. The bigger picture here is that the intricate modeling featured in Mario Kart 8 is essentially absent. As we race through these tracks, notice how the artwork in the new tracks is far simpler and more generic with fewer geometric elements and less complex structures. It really just doesn't look anything like the base game. There are a handful of other modeling differences worth mentioning as well. In the base game, trees and shrubs are handled with a mix of geometry and alpha textures, with an ultimate visual result that looks quite attractive. In the booster courses, these have been swapped with simple plastic-like models without any alpha textures. 
The base tracks also feature fully 3D crowds, except in large stadiums, whereas medium-sized crowds in the booster courses are represented by 2D sprites with jerky-looking flipbook-style animations. Mario Kart 8 takes some rendering shortcuts to improve performance, like baking out shadow maps across environments. One of the largest performance gains, however, likely comes from baked ambient occlusion. Instead of rendering ambient occlusion at runtime with a screen space technique, Mario Kart 8 appears to rely on baked ambient occlusion maps. In the base game, this generally looks fine, but it does appear a bit strong in the booster courses. Perhaps this has been done intentionally to add a little bit more depth to the tracks given the lack of texture detail. This is going to come down to a matter of preference ultimately, but the thicker AO does have some conspicuous and unpleasant interactions with the bilinear texture filtering at times, which can create some blocky black smudges along the edges of certain tracks. More annoying, however, is the implementation of cube maps for reflections. Now, cube maps were used to simulate reflections on some tracks in Mario Kart 8 already, probably most prominently in Neo Bowser City. But these cube maps were relatively subtle and importantly, those tracks are full of fast turns, making the static nature of those reflections less obvious. The booster courses use cube maps in a much less tactful way. Just look at Waluigi Pinball, which has a big, ugly, low-resolution cube map for a long, relatively straight section of track that harshly exposes the limitations of the cube map technique. It really just looks awful. Other surfaces, like the court area in Coconut Mall and the finish line straight in Sky High Sunday, also showcase a pretty crude use of cube maps. My final complaint here comes down to track design. The booster course tracks are less dynamic than the base tracks in Mario Kart 8. There are fewer boost pads, no underwater sections, and very limited glider sections. The track layouts are simpler, with fewer corners, wider roads, and shorter circuit lengths. The best Mario Kart 8 tracks combine challenging sets of fast corners with extended anti-gravity sections, multiple viable routes, and track hazards. Most of the new tracks are sedate in comparison, with laid-back layouts, less interesting track features, and little in the way of vehicle transformations. Mario Kart Tour is a mobile game that favors simpler track designs, owing to its one-handed and swipe-based gameplay. Simply porting these tracks over without large modifications means that they don't match the gameplay concepts in Mario Kart 8 especially well. So these new tracks aren't a great fit for Mario Kart 8, but how do they differ from their equivalents in Mario Kart Tour? A fair bit of work has been done to try to match these tracks more closely with their Mario Kart 8 predecessors. The largest improvement lies in the texture work. Some of the textures have been completely redrawn, most prominently the textures for roads and other track surfaces the player is meant to ride over. Road textures have been completely overhauled, with higher resolution textures, normal maps, and cube map based reflections in some cases. For most textures, however, the differences are more subtle. Detailed textures seem to have been blended in over the very simple base texture, to give the impression of a higher quality and more natural looking asset. Again, this does help a little bit, but it doesn't come particularly close to matching the texture work in the base tracks. The other major changes come from the fact that these tracks are running with different engines. Mario Kart Tour makes a pretty basic use of Unity, while Mario Kart 8 uses a proprietary Nintendo engine. Mario Kart 8 has more sophisticated looking lighting with additional features like Bloom and Specular. Surface lighting in general has a more dynamic appearance, which to my eyes is much improved from Tour. The baked shadowing is more diffuse in the Booster Course versions, which better aligns with other Mario Kart 8 tracks. Dynamic objects cast sharp real-time shadows onto the track as well, instead of the baked shadows that seem to be used exclusively in Tour. Finally, there are a couple of areas where I did notice some slight geometric differences. For instance, the steps at the start of Coconut Mall are rounded off in their Mario Kart 8 iteration. By and large, the geometry does appear identical, but there are some small changes. The differences from Tour are fairly modest, but the changes do manage to bring the tracks more in line with the base game's courses. The texture improvements here are critical and in some cases work quite well, though they don't go nearly far enough. 
Lastly, let's take a quick look at the Booster Course tracks measured against their predecessors on prior console hardware. Most of these tracks are derived from prior series entries, so are these tracks touched up or fully remade? Thankfully, the new tracks seem to have been fully redone. Comparing the Booster Course tracks up against emulated 3DS and Wii versions running at high resolutions, we can see that the artwork bears very little resemblance to the older tracks, although the layouts are largely unchanged. Now that's probably for the best, given the limited polygon budget of prior Mario Kart titles. Comparing them here does expose some of the cruder techniques in these new conversions, however like the cube map based reflections in Waluigi Pinball, which simply look much better in Mario Kart 7. And of course, the artistic mismatch between these courses and the other courses in Mario Kart 8 is still a major lingering issue. As a final note, all the rendering parameters from Mario Kart 8 seem to apply equally to these new tracks. This is still a 1080p60 or 720p60 experience in portable and docked play respectively. Anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering are absent, just as they were before, with somewhat compromised image quality as a result. Mario Kart Tour is a decent mobile game. While it's not really my cup of tea, I can understand its appeal. Mario Kart Tour wraps popular characters and colorful, basic graphics around a simplified variant of Mario Kart and that works perfectly well for mobile phones, but not for Nintendo Switch. So porting these tracks over was always going to be a bit of a tricky process, and Nintendo appears to have done the bare minimum here, but not much else. The result? Players are left with courses that largely don't play like Mario Kart 8 tracks, don't look like Mario Kart 8 tracks, and don't feel like Mario Kart 8 tracks. But there is a silver lining here. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on Switch has 48 courses, 16 of which were originally downloadable content on the Wii U version of the game. The Booster Course content expansion is set to include 48 new courses by the end of next year, doubling the number of courses available to a whopping 96 courses in total. That's simply a massive amount of new content for a beloved game. And despite some of my quibbles with some of the track designs, this is still a good deal of fun. And there are a handful of standout tracks here, like Coconut Mall and Ninja Hideaway. For 25 US dollars to buy it outright, or the cost of a Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack subscription, this is definitely a worthwhile deal for Mario Kart fans. As long as you keep your expectations in check, the new tracks are perfectly enjoyable additions to a great game. But the Switch is not a cell phone and these tracks are simply well below the standards of other Mario Kart 8 content. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon at digitalfounder.net for exclusive and early access content, and to get in touch, just use Twitter. Thanks for watching.